Hey everybody, Leo McGuire here, Seneca College, class of 1983. I want to thank Ian very much for including me on the email thread. I uh, would have been a very slim chance I would have been able to join you at the golf tournament this year anyway, but uh, uh, you never know. I, I speak at a lot of golf tournaments in the summer in the Ottawa area here and uh, sometimes in the GTA where I saw Ian and Doug Orr last year at uh, one of the Seneca alumni events. I understand that some of them have run concurrently over the last few years, but uh, uh, I know uh, a couple times every now and then I hear from one of the guys that played on the team in the era that I was a student at the school. Uh, I wrote, I worked for the uh, the school paper at the time and hung around the hockey team quite a bit. I ended up doing some of the uh, PA work, which uh, when Seneca hosted the national championship, I believe in '82 in North York is where Don Cherry and Ron Ellis were the celebrity presenters. And it was actually the first official time I met either of those guys. And, and I think, I'm pretty sure you'd have to think that Doug probably played a big role in, in making that happen. So, and I know Doug, uh, Doug actually hired me part-time that first year in 81. And, uh, and I drove to Zamboni a little bit because I had experience in the Manatic Arena here in the, uh, the area, the hometowns where I grew up, south of Ottawa, Cars, Manatic, and where I currently live in Osgood. So, I just thought I'd um, send this back via video rather than just put on the email threads. I you know the guys are talking about some of their experiences and whatnot, having some fun, I guess, with uh, uh, drinking and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, my time at Seneca, um, well, largely because of Spider Jones, was two of the more, most impactful years of my life uh, because of him. I mean, next to my late father, no man had a bigger impact on me personally, but Right down in behind that would be guys like Doug Orr. Uh, Doug would be in that group. I, I remember vividly uh, meeting him the first time in 81 and the times I got to spend with him after that. Uh, I ended up getting to know Bobby uh, a little bit and uh, and I've written four books and, and Bobby Orr wrote the foreword to my second book. So uh, we, we do have some other connections. I've been to Perry Sound a number of times and I've spoken there at Bobby's uh, event and Doug's name comes up all the time. So he had a huge impact on me and, uh, you know, I mean, Ian, uh, you know, that, it, it was just a special time. I mean, Nick Harbrook and Frank, the coaches at the time, um, you know, at Christmas time, I was one of the last guys usually to leave. I, I was living in Ottawa. I was a quick trip home, but um, I was playing intramural hockey, obviously, so my gear was always uh, available. And uh, they let me come out and skate. Some of you guys maybe, Doug King may remember, Colville, Daryl McLennan, another name. Uh, Big Jim McDonald, to me, was, uh, he was the captain when I was there for you guys. And I think he wore number three, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I really looked up to him. I, I, th I thought he was um, an amazing athlete and just a tower of strength. But I really came on just to reminisce about my, a couple other stories. As I said, I did the PA. I think the biggest rivalry for Seneca at that time was Humber College. And uh, I think this was a playoff game. You guys would know, those that were there. But they, they had a real idiot on the team. And so Seneca signed the Coke machine. You guys remember that? Tommy Housen. Tommy Housen. And you know the irony? He lives about five minutes from me right now in the village of Osgood. He's been working for the RCMP for years, and he is built like a brick shit out still. I mean, he is huge. He's massive. He, he's got to be 240 pounds and with not much fat on him. Like, he, he, he's just jacked. And he's been working undercover, I think, for RCMP for years. But anyway, um, uh, he remember, he, they, Seneca put him on the team, really, just to fight that idiot, which he did. <laughs> which was fantastic but the best was in the stands and I was working the the penalty box with one of the guys from the football team Marco big Marco I don't remember his last name and he worked the door at Fred's garage as well our school pub anyway Spider was there and he used to get the fans going give me an S give me an E give me an N and he's over there I'm in the penalty box and I could see some Humber guys had come over by bus or whatever came over a group of them 8 10 12 and they started chirping Spider, and it didn't look too bad at first, but then I saw Spider stand up, and I'd gotten to know him pretty well. I was reading his body language, and I just I just said to Marco, I said, there's going to be a fight. Spider is going to get involved. We got to get over, I got to get over there. I got to get over there. 
And and uh, he's going, Liam, like, settle down, settle down. I said, no fucking way, man. I'm going. I left the, I left the box and went all the way around the arena and, and uh, came up into the stands as Spider was basically calling on an entire row of Humber fans, male fans. And, you know, look, he, he was 6'2", 215, good-sized guy. But we're not talking about Andre the Giant here. But if you remember him at that time, let's just put it this way. Despite the fact there were eight or ten of them, they weren't rushing to, to get in. But you could cut the tension with a knife. It was, it was phenomenal. Anyway, nothing happened. And uh, some whatever, whoever was doing whatever in-house security or whatever came over, got the thing diffused, and I went back to the box. I think Marco had kind of ambled his way around at that point too and said, well, if the thing does go down, like we all, we're all going. So I don't know if it's a hockey team ever knew about that, but uh, but that was that was a pretty exciting moment. I was on the bus a few times. You know, I remember going on some of the road trips when I was writing the stories, and uh, I remember another time, especially that first um, first year. Uh, I remember walking into the dressing room with a bottle of whiskey one time and uh, having a few shots with the guys after practice. And but really, I, I remember skating at the Christmases, and uh, Nick and Frank saying it was okay, and. I remember being on the ice with, with Kinger and Big Jim and uh, a few of the other guys were very kind uh, to allow me just come out there, skate around with you guys for a little bit. So I was playing on the, one of the intramural teams and you know, all the intramural teams, I don't know if you guys even knew about what the intramural hockey essentially was. Intramural hockey at Seneca in the early 80s was a way for our security staff to stay, to stay um, you know, active and healthy with the fists. I mean, it was full contact. If you fought, you didn't get kicked out. It was run by the security, Bim, Buzzy, and Smitty. And, and, uh, and they, they, they had a team in. And they, they basically took who, whichever team had the new guys that were the biggest guys, they fought them. And they just fucking started fighting them. That was intramural hockey in Seneca's in the early 80s. <laughs> I played on the RTV team. And we had a couple of lads who could go, but I mean, we had nobody. Nobody could handle that kind of heat. Anyway, we did have one big rivalry game and ended up bringing Spider out to that as well. I mean, he, didn't, he couldn't skate, but I just said, just stand on the bench because we're all going today for sure. <laughs> Anyways, whatever. But uh, it was a blast, man. Uh, two of the greatest years of my life there. And uh, I don't know when or if I'll, I'll get down to a golf tournament. As I said, we did that one last year when I was touring with, uh, with the new book that I, that I had just written with Goldie Goldthorpe, the impetus for the movie... Uh, uh, the character Ogie Oglethorpe in the movie Slapshot. So uh, we, we had a Rick Mallett who was on uh, is Goldie's nephew who played for Seneca. Uh, had the pleasure of getting to know Rick over the last few years. And, and uh, we hung together there for a few days over the course of that tourney. It was great. And, and uh, we had just had a blast that day, especially, especially seeing uh, Doug and Ian. That, that was really, really, really special for me to see you guys. I cannot tell you how much that meant. So... Uh, it sure was uh, brought back a lot of memories, man. I know the campus has totally changed. Nothing is where, where it was, but nothing can take away what we had as memories either. So, so good on you, fellas. And, uh, you know, it is, we are under some uh, global pandemic stretches here, but uh, I know if we were at Fred's garage, what we'd be doing. So, and I know what you let me do in the dressing room all those years ago. So I'm going to toast uh, the Seneca Braves. The late Nick and Frank and uh, Ian, thank you for uh, for CCing me on the note and, and Doug Orr, especially for your friendship, man, your class and your friendship. Uh, what an honor that, that's been. And any of the players who uh, kind of took me on your wing a little bit back then, you know, a little bit of a chip on my shoulder coming from the Ottawa Valley. So I really appreciated uh, anybody uh, hanging on to me a few nights when I was swinging from the chandeliers there. So all the best, fellas. Everybody stay safe, okay? G'day.